Welcome to Chapter 12, Services Marketing. Um, services are interesting, um, and we'll, what we'll talk about mostly in this, this little chat here is uh, kind of the differences between service marketing and product marketing, physical product marketing. Now, most of the rules stay the same. The, the big difference is, and services are a huge part about, of our world right now, um, are these things right here. They're intangibility. You can't physically touch a service. You don't know until really after the fact, and even then you might not understand whether or not you've in fact had a good service. I mean, there are, um, like for example, if you go in for a diagnosis on a, a medical diagnosis, well, how do you know if you had a good one or not? I mean, do you take their word for it? I mean, you almost have to, I realize. But, I mean, it, uh, a haircut, you only know after the fact. Food, you only know after the fact, as, i.e., a restaurant experience. So, uh, so intangibility, you can't touch. Inseparability, you can't touch the service and how you think it performed from the person you're getting the service from, or the service provider. So the uh, haircut's dependent upon the person giving you the haircut. The medical diagnosis is determined by how good the uh, medical person is, and so on. The cook in the uh, restaurant. It becomes inseparability. Inconsistency is services are, have to and are inconsistent by nature. Some people require way more serv level of service to be happy than others. There is a baseline, but services are just that. They are inconsistent. And they are inconsistent because of the service provider as well. And then inventory. You don't carry inventory. You don't have idle or excess capacity usually because you can't afford to have people standing around doing nothing. So that's why... Uh, this uh, idle production of capacity, you can hire more service providers, but it tends to be at more dynamic than physical goods because you can't save them up. There you go. Look at the service elements of airlines. This is a good graph. You know, cost of inventory, incredibly high cost of inventory for hospitals to have extra beds. Low cost because there's really no inventory for a hair salon. They use products, but they're not storing, they don't, they're not typically for resale. And real estate agencies, they're just an agent. They don't own what they sell. A service, service continuum delivered by people or equipment, profit or nonprofit, government sponsored. There's a continuum there or a line, a sliding ruler that shows uh, what, what that's like. So here's a continuum. So service dominated, product dominated, intangible, tangible. So the ones that are about in the middle are a fast food restaurant, balanced equally between products and services. Tailored suit. You know, what was your experience with the tailor? I mean, you, so this is a good graph in that sense. classifications, equipment-based, people-based. I mean, if we can get equipment to deliver the same service that a person does, we'll probably want to do it. Because people that deliver services are infinitely variable. Think about it. You could, not you, but someone that you work with might show up that delivers a service hungover, mad at their significant other, and otherwise cranky at the world, and they're going to deliver a service with a smile on their face. They just ran over their dog or got a ticket on the way to work. Lots of stuff can go wrong. If we can make it behave more in an automated sense, there we go. Now things are better because we know we're going to get consistency. Now there can be a frust. Now I'm not suggesting that people don't add value because they certainly can, but they also add risk and variability. So just some ideas. 
purchasing. We do search properties, experience properties, credence properties. Let's take a look at those. So where, um, you know, difficult to evaluate, easy to, it's easy to, or difficult to evaluate, like I said, the quality of medical diagnosis. Easy to evaluate the quality of clothing. And you'll see kind of where that continuum lies. So that when you read about this, that's a, this is an area to really uh, zero in on. Gap analysis, the gap between what the market expects or wants and what they're delivered. So here are five dimensions of quality or how quality is judged. Okay, and this is what they ask of an airline on the right-hand side. This is a very good graph to study and, and to understand as far as how, um, what and how is going on or how, how the service is performing. Do read the examples. They are critical that you pay attention to those. So service encounters, service contracts, audits, uh, relationship marketing, all of these are um, pretty vital activities in the world of service marketing. If you look at relationship marketing, in particular, CRM, Customer Relationship Management, it's just the ability to better serve or better, uh, that word empathy, um, understanding, communication, that's what CRM attempts to do, Customer Relationship Management. So, and this is a good graph. This is in your book as well. Green box is equal customer activity. Orange box equal employee. Look at all the possibility for success or failure in regard to how people interact with their goods or their service providers. Make or break you. There are places you won't even go back to because of the bad services. The way you've been treated, for example. Product might have been good, but the way you were treated caused you to Look elsewhere. Branding, then, is an indicator of the quality of service you're going to get. Now, if you've had bad experience with McDonald's or Sprint or the American Red Cross, you're probably not going to go back. So that's, that's part of what goes on in your mind very quickly if you've had experience, especially when if it's been negative, with a certain brand and a service provider. Distribution. Again, it's critical you read the book and read it carefully. The distribution of and promotion of services, how to make it available. Um, you want to be consistent and you always want to tell the truth. People, because they are the most important element of delivering a service, you want to be very careful who you hire. Very careful. Exceedingly careful because that's what's going to make or break you ultimately. Capacity management. This is why it's cheaper to go to a theater on off nights or at a matinee. And that's why, it, that's how they manage demand. They try to get you there at an off peak to, to utilize, because they got to be open anyway at, at those times. Okay, I think, yes, that's all for chapter 12. Enjoy reading it and do your best.